I'm someone who always wanted to be in control. I wanted to know the truth, and I always wanted to know what was next to save myself from some future mishap that was completely out of my control, but always ended up maybe happening anyway. My mind was either so far ahead into the future to try to take charge of whatever outcome, or so deep into my past that I would get frustrated with the life experiences that happened to me, up until I heard a quote. Understanding the law of detachment is a deep knowing that you control the process and not the outcome. Pursue excellence, ignore success, and you will be utilizing the law of detachment to maximum effect. If you're totally engaged in the process, the outcome will take care of itself. I wanted to create peace into my life. But I held desires that would take me existing in a masculine energy enough to take action on the things that I wanted. And upon taking action to do those things, I never sat well with the energy or the attitude that I had once I was doing them. I was so desperate in my pursuit of change that I found myself attaching to a certain outcome. I found myself so attached to this specific outcome that if I was not close to or at this specific reality, I was irritable, unpleasant, unsatisfied, and in most cases I felt ungrateful because I was. I attached myself to the fear and disappointment that would overtake me if years would pass and I had not in fact reached this place, this better version of myself in that time so much to the point that it actually fueled my aspirations. Vibrationally, I attached myself to this lower state of me to feed my desires into this higher vibrational life. And of course, it did not work and it has not sustained me. And years have passed and not much has changed because my mind still has not changed up until this very point, which is why I'm making this video. If I was really serious about developing a better self-concept and changing my personal concept, I needed to think different ways to create a better outcome for myself. It wasn't enough for me to change my appearance and my routine. I needed to change my mind. I needed to change the way I felt about the things outside of my control. I needed to change my view of myself, my self-worth, my idea of success my character and who I actually am behind closed doors and who I wanted to become. So developing a good self-concept was important, but it was only a part of the journey. I knew I needed to master the law of detachment. And understand, mastery is a practice that develops over time, years. It takes years to develop the intentionality of mastering a law, a practice, a thing. Even meditation takes people years, and it's still a growing journey. As we grow and spiral into ourselves, the journey just gets deeper and deeper as we go. So we just take it one day, one moment at a time, and we just start from where we are. When we hear the word detachment, maybe the natural processing of this word is categorized into something negative. But I think that's only a surface level view. When we detach from outcomes, what we are claiming in this act is that we are so content with who we are, so relaxed in our own state of being, that we are better able to be a witness to and processing of our emotions and the experiences that happen in our life to make better decisions for ourselves. We exist in our life in a state of neutrality that allows us to be a lot more present and in our power. Not because we are careless, but because caring does not beget suffering. In this law of detachment, I know that I can be engaged, passionate, and detached from the outcome at the same time. 
and still be worthy of my desires. When we want things, and things are outside of our control, uncertainty happens. And this uncertainty is a part of life. And through this acceptance, carries wisdom if we allow ourselves to be open to it. I realize that accepting uncertainty is a challenge, but it is not the end of the world if I do not know. And if I really sit in the unknown long enough, I'll be able to experience the bliss of the present moment. Essentially, I realized that wanting to know everything and wanting to be a step ahead was really my ego shining through being the spoiled brat that it is. So I lay it to rest by having full control over my reactions, over the way that I'm processing things, actually slowing myself down to see every possible reality and make a clear decision after the fact. So if I just focused on the process of being, all that I want, all that I aspire to be, existing in my gifts, doing things that I'm passionate about, if I just focus on the process of doing that and detach myself from the outcome, I'm able to allow the things that I want and the things that I want to manifest to come towards me with the work that I'm naturally already doing instead of putting more effort into the waiting game and the desperation that settles in my body when I, I don't know, I, I want things to come but it's not up to me on the time of their arrival. But if I just focus on the process of being, the process of doing the things that I most love and enjoy and that are most in alignment with my passions and my dreams and my aspirations, I can rest in the present moment and in the parts of my day to day where I usually feel this guilt or feel like it's not enough with the certainty that I've done all that I can do and that what I am after is on its way to me because of the work that I've already put in. And this has a lot to do with self-worth. I feel like in my family, there's a lineage of this trauma of not feeling like they're enough, feeling like no one could ever um, see their love or see their effort, just this unsettling, deep-rooted unworthiness. And I'm trying to kind of mend that within my own life and the things that I tell myself and the way that I'm processing what a person is doing to me or how they are receiving my love or how they are viewing what I have to offer as truly enough because I know that I am enough. And it all stops and starts with me. And this detachment law can go as deep as your relationship too. If I focus on the act of love and just put my intentions on being authentic and giving what I have to offer, I should never feel like I am not enough because I truly feel and believe that what I am doing is and that I have much to offer and the way that I bring about the love that I have for my partner and the people in my life and after that I can rest just to like kind of trail back on my videos if you watch the video about um the abandonment wound that i'm trying to heal it, it's it's even deep into that if you grew up with a parent that wasn't present i think for me how i operated in my life was that i always wanted to go above and beyond for someone else i never let things go i always had to dig one hair deeper just to communicate or let a person know that i was there or try to help or be helpful because i know what it feels like when a parent completely gives up and i never want anyone to feel that and it's caused me to just beat a dead horse in certain situations because I really want people to know and feel that I was there and up until I I can see this clearly now because I am in the growing stages of that wound so I know what it looks like now and I know what it looks like in others and I know what it looks like in other things outside of relationships so really um, having this conversation and healing that part of myself 
it's life changing because I'm able to show up in ways professionally, in emotionally, in ways that I haven't before because I'm more mindful and aware of this habit that I have that I thought was helpful. I actually thought that I was doing something of good by going. 10 times harder in, in certain situations where I just honestly needed to rest in my own presence, be quiet with myself, and have confidence that who I am is enough. Because you you can be in relationships and friendships and, and all of these things, but if you never feel like you're enough, there's nothing that that other person can do to try to change your mind about that. You know, it's really all you all of these things, all of these methods, all of these conversations that I feel like influencers are trying to have, well, they're having with themselves because maybe it's a part of them that they need to understand and grow and learn from too. And all of this is about the better relationship that you have with yourself. And nothing outside of you is going to feel or um, take up space the way that you are within yourself. What I'm saying is no better relationship in your life will be or equate to the relationship that you have with yourself. So it doesn't matter when you start, just do it or be more intentional about it because it really does change the trajectory of your life. So the way that we detach is to simply be. Existing in your own stillness means that you aren't attaching or identifying to anything outside of yourself. In this state, you also aren't wanting or desiring anything. And I think sometimes our heart needs those precious moments where it's just doing what it can to pump instead of overdoing it to support you from whatever thoughts that you have created in your mind that have taken you outside of regulation. I know when I'm feeling anxious about something or when I'm panicked within my mind, my heart is beating a thousand times a minute in a present moment where it really does not have to. I've done it to myself and it's not fair to your body what your mind is allowing you to do to yourself and maybe that's just how I view it but when I'm anxious, I don't feel like my best self. My body doesn't feel good and up until I'm able to regulate and find just still moments where I'm just honestly happy to be alive and I'm grateful for my body, grateful for my shell, grateful for the opportunities that I have in this life, that I actually feel much better and I'm not thinking about all of the things that I want to manifest because eventually those things will come. But if I'm not taking care of myself on the way, it'll all be for nothing you know? And it's kind of hard because technology, I think, is kind of doing us a, doing us in and we're trying to be human, we're trying to ground ourselves, but we're also elevating technologically and it's, we're being pulled every which way. Although artificial intelligence is our future, is a part of our life, it's not a part of us. If you are able to find a detachment from that now and exist in a space where you have full autonomy over your urges to pick up your phone, over your desires to uh, technolo te technologically do something else, like we have not even realized the amount that we consume is completely unsafe. And it's hard for me to say that because I'm also existing on this platform, right? But it doesn't matter what you consume. As long as you're able to detach in any type of way to be okay with who you are, know the signs when you've had enough and give yourself that time of rest. Give yourself an, the ability to be human because it is truly a gift to exist here. Then that's another form of detachment that I feel like may make you feel good. You know, we have all of these things in our lives that are pulling us every which way. 
and sometimes when we get home from our work, our day to day, from taking care of our children and all of these things, we just want a speck of peace, a speck of maybe even silence or our mind shutting off and doing the things that we enjoy. If you can find that thing that isn't technologically sound, do it now and let that be a practice, even if you're not even good at meditating, de developing a strong meditation practice is something that people spend years of their lives doing. I know social media has made it become uh, this um, microwavable thing, and, and it's good to be intentional about it. It's always good to be mindful about it, but the instant gratification that we exist in in our day-to-day -day because of technology has completely put our priorities out of whack. Like, if you think about, uh, in my mind, what's coming to my mind, a uh, karate kid, the wax on, wax off, he was so like, I want to start kicking butt, I want to start doing all of these cool advanced things that I saw you doing, and he's just like, no, like, wax on, wax off. And sometimes we have to simplify in order to really build a technique within our lives, in order to really build a strong foundation, we have to get back to simplifying and building a technique, building our own practice, and whatever that is for you, whatever that is for you, that's okay. To me, it's writing. Sometimes just sitting down with my thoughts, it feels so far away, but no, I start letter by letter, word by word, sentence by sentence, and then it develops into something else. But yes, the way that we detach is to simply be, okay? Start with small steps and see how it feels. You could try limiting your social media use, like I said, but after you subscribe. Or maybe it's journaling, or making art, going on a walk. Whatever that thing that makes you feel most human and connected with yourself, maybe outside of being so reactive to the, to the things that happen in your life, you take a step back center yourself by doing the thing that brings you most peace and then come back with an answer. I realized in, in a lot of my relationships, I'm someone that has to talk about it right then and there. And it feels like an attack to the other person. And I'm, I'm not, it's to me, I'm like, no, I just want to fix it right now because I know what it feels like to be abandoned. I know what it feels like when you're not able to say everything that you need to say. And I wasn't able to say these things to, you know, my father until I was, but like that feeling of not really being able to say what you need to. I always want to hold that space and have that space to do that. But it's not necessarily the correct way to do things 100% of the time. And I have to accept that I can't control anyone else. What I view as mending something could be something completely invasive to someone else and not be so attached with the process of healing to accept that people heal in different ways and I should honor that just as much as I want someone to honor mine. But anyway, baby steps is always a good idea. Find that thing that allows you to reconnect with yourself detach yourself from the outcome, still have passion and show up and engage with what you want, but know that you're enough to let go and feel that what you have to offer is truly enough once you take the action. I think there's just this weird confusion where people like do this psychological thing in their mind, they let it go, and then they sit and they wait. And if that works for you, call me, because I want to be able to do that. But it doesn't really work like that. I think what works for me, and it may work for other people, I discover what it is I actually want. I actually decide what that is. Some people haven't gotten there yet. I take certain steps to align myself with the things that I want to do and do those things. And then after that, I let it go. I don't sit here and look at everything that I did before, hoping that it was enough. I don't judge myself for the things that I've done in the past and say, that's why it's not going to come. I just kind of let it go. And I get better every time. And I do something else. Something that, something else 
that interests me because I am a human, multifaceted being. I like alien documentaries and cooking shows, and sometimes that brings me so much peace. And I let it go. And maybe you should too. I hope you enjoyed this video. If there's anything that you felt resonated with you, let me know in the comments below. I really do appreciate your time. Hope you like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next one.